Hi everyone, this is Steve. Today we're going to go through legal problem 904, fruit into baskets. Let's take a look at the problem. Uh, in the row of trees, the ith tree produces fruit with type tree i. You can start at any tree of your choice, then repeatedly perform the following steps. There are two steps. Step one is add one piece of fruit from this tree to your baskets. If you cannot, stop. Second is move the next tree to the right of the current tree. If there is no tree to the right, stop. Okay, note that you do not have any choice after initial choice of starting tree. You must perform step one, then step two, and then back to step one, and then step two, and so on until you can stop. You have two baskets. So here's the key. You have only two baskets, which means, the, that, which means that you can only hold two types of fruits. And each basket can carry any quantity of fruit. So the basket is of gigantic um, volume. It can hold any quantity of a fruit. It can hold like one minute or two minutes. But you want each basket to only carry one type of the fruit each. What is the total amount of fruit that you can collect with this procedure? Let's take a look at, at these examples. Example one is one to one. What does one to one mean? It means there are two types of fruits. One is the with the number one. The other type of fruit is with the number two. So it means two types of fruits. All right. On these three trees, there are three trees total. Zero, one, two. So there are three trees indicated by these. And the types of these fruits on these three trees are one and two and one. So what why the output is two that is because we can collect all of these three fruits right so zero uh, one two three a total of three we can collect all three fruits that is why we can collect one two and one that, be, that is because one and one these two are of the same type of fruit so we can collect both of them and the other remaining basket is for type two all right I hope that makes sense. Let's take a look at the second example. 0, 1, 2, and 2. How many maximum number of fruits that we can carry? That is 3. So let's start from the beginning. If we start from 0, that means we can carry only 2, right? That is 0 and 1. We can carry only two types of fruit. The first type is of type 0. The second type is of type 1. We cannot have type 2 although there are two of type two fruits, right? That is because that means we'll have three types of fruits, but we are only given two types of baskets. All right, so what, instead what we want to do is that we want to start picking fruit from type one. That means we can collect three fruits, which is one, two, two, one, two, two, right? So here is the explanation. Let's take one more example, then we can start thinking about the algorithm. The third example is 1, 2, 3, 2, 2. Okay, so if we start picking the fruit from the very first one again, we can pick only two, right? So 1 and 2, that's the only two types of fruit, two quantities of fruit that we can pick if we start from the very first one, right? Because the third one is of type 3, which is a different type, the third type than the first two, which means we cannot put into our only two baskets. Right, So if we start from the second one, which is two, then we can pick all four. We can pick four fruits out of the five, which is much bigger than only two, right? So that is the correct output, which is two, because two, three, two, two. So three fruits are of the same type, which is two. Only one fruit is of a different type, which is three. And this, give us, this gives us the maximum quantity, which is four. That is why the output is four. The same goes for this case, right? So now we can think about the algorithm. The idea that comes to my mind is very straightforward. It's kind of similar to a sliding window pro problem. We can use a sliding window that keeps that helps us keep track of the maximum number of fruits that we can pick within this maximum within this sliding window. What we have within this sliding window is a max of two types of fruits. As long as we encounter a new type, a third type of the fruit, we need to find the first index, the starting index of whichever the earlier one that we need to get rid of, right? And then we'll just keep moving the starting window until we reach the end 
Along the way, we'll keep updating the max fruits. This is a variable or kind of a global variable that we can keep updating. That will give us the maximum fruit that we can pick. I hope that makes sense. For example, here, just looking at example three, we'll start from here, index zero. And then we come to here. Here is one and two. So the max fruits at this point is two. And then we encounter three. At this point, this is the third type of fruit, which we have only two types of baskets, which we cannot hold, right? So at this point, we want to find the earliest index, the start index of our sliding window. In this case, it should be two, because we have a new one that comes in. The only second type that we can hold is the one that is closest to this, which is two. Of course, we can have multiple twos here. Then we'll just find the very first index of two that doesn't have any other types of fruit in between this two and this three. I hope that makes sense. And then we'll just keep moving the sliding window, two pointers, starting index and ending index, all the way to the end of this given tree array. Along the way, we're updating the max fruits variable. In the end, we'll just return max fruits. I hope that makes sense. If it, it's still kind of confusing, let's put the idea into actual code. Then everything will be much clearer. Now let's start writing code. First, I'll have a variable called max fruit. In the end, we'll just return max fruit. Next, we can have a simple integer. Don't be scared that this is a set. It's going to give us O and um, space complexity. No, it's not. It's still O1 time complexity because we're only going to maintain two elements in the set, right? Because we have only two types of baskets. New hash set. Next, we'll have a, a, an index. I'll call it start index. We'll start from the beginning. And then this is basically the left pointer of the sliding window. The right pointer keep, keeps moving towards the right. And the left pointer will update it as well if we encounter a third type of fruit. Let's see. Tree length i plus plus. If as long as we have never encountered two types of fruits yet, that means set size is smaller than two or we have encountered two types of fruits, but both of the two types of fruits, the, the one that we're currently iterating on is still one of the two types. We're still good. So set contains tree i. If this is the case, what we can do is we don't need to update the start index. What we need to do is that we'll just add this one into this set, uh, this set will just contain the two types of fruit that we currently have in within our sliding window. And then we'll also update max fruits. We always try to update this one just in case there's any possibility that we have a bigger sliding window size. So here we'll have i minus start index plus one. So this is going to give us the maximum possible length. For example, let's take a look at this one. This example. Well, i starts from 0. And then, so the first one, 1 and 2. So we first go to 1, right? 1 is here. It's, it's going to come into this if branch, because at this point, set is empty. Then we update here i is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. So max fruits is going to give us 1, right? I hope this might make sense. And then else. We only need an else. We don't need to check whether the size of the set is going to be greater than 2 because that's impossible. As long as it's not smaller than 2, it must be equal to 2 because that's just the size of the set that we're going to control. If this is the case, what we're going to do is that we want to find the last index that is not of this type. For example, here. Still, we're looking at example three. At this point, when we iterate on this type of fruit, which is three, what we want to do is that we are sure that this is the third type of the fruit because there's already two types of fruit in the set already. What we are sure is that the one that that is right on the left side of this one 
is the type of fruit that we can sure it, that we can be sure that we can retain in this hash set in our basket because this is the second type that we are going to maintain. However, we need to find the very last index of the originally first type of the fruit. All right. In this case, it's going to be this type, which is one. So we want to find the last index of this type of the fruit because we find a new type of fruit and this one is going to replace the position of this one. So we need to find it. I'll have another variable just called last one. And this is the one that this is the originally second type, but it's going to it's going to be the other type of fruit, the second type of fruit that we can retain in our current, in our newly expanded sliding window. So it's going to be i minus 1. In this case, suppose we're iterating on this type of fruit, and this i minus 1 is going to be 2, right? So what we want to do is we want to find the last index that is not 2 of type 2. So we want to find 1. So what? We'll of course, this is not super optimal. I'm just writing a for loop inside a for loop. So this is going to give us some not super nice time complexity, but um, at least it's very straightforward to understand. So in this case, we want to start from i minus 2, which is this one. If i is at this point here, and i minus 2 is going to give us here. And then j is greater than 0, j minus minus as long whenever we encounter the one j not equals to last one that means one and two they are these two types these two fruits are not of the same type then that means we find the index that we want so we can update the start index to be this one to be j plus one which means it's going to be this is j and j plus one is this that means we find the start index. And then we'll remove this one from tree j. Then we're going to remove the originally first type of fruit that we used to keep in our sliding window, which is this one, right? We remove this type of fruit in this hash set. Now we can just break out. This is guaranteed to exist because the the only it will come into here only when the size of the set is equal to two. So we can safely break out. Now, what we also want to do is that we'll add this new type of fruit into the hash set, and also we'll do we'll try to update the max fruit. All right, this is the entire algorithm. Now let me hit run code to see if it works. Hmm. hmm, it doesn't. Let me take a look what's going on. It gets index minus one out of bounds for length three. Somehow it comes here. Let me double check if the size, oh, I think this should be all. All right, because this is either we have not encountered two types of fruit yet, or we keep encountering the same t type of of these two types of fruit. So this should be an all condition instead of n. Let me hit run code again. All right, accept it. Now let me hit submit. Let's see if it's going to work. All right, accept it. It is uh, not super impressive. I guess it's because I have a nested for loop here. So free free to optimize this. We can actually use just one more index as long as we keep track of the last index of the first type of the fruit, that should be good. Let me hit run time, uh, submit again, and really no, uh, that's totally fine. But here is the idea of this problem. Um, I hope it, I hope it makes sense to you guys for uh, helping to understand this problem. It's you can call it a sliding window solution or two pointer solution. It's not really two pointer because I have a nested for loop here. Of course, you can. You guys can optimize this by not using a nested for loop. You can just uh, use one more variable to keep track of the last index of the first type of the fruit in the sliding window. That should uh, simplify the code and help with the time complexity as well. But here's the idea. Please do me a favor and gently tap the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm, and I really appreciate it. 
Also, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel as I have accumulated quite a lot of different lead code tutorials, data structure and algorithm uh, videos, and also Amazon Web Services certificate, how you can help prepare and study for, um, study for AWS materials and get AWS certified. Feel free to check them out. Hopefully, I'll just see you guys in just a few short seconds in my other videos. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys in the next one.